Back with us, our HLN law enforcement analyst, Mike Brooks, and great criminal defense attorney, Janet Johnson. So much again to get to, and callers are lining up as well. Uh, Mike, what is your headline at this point? That you want to see tensions calm tonight as the National Guard moves in, or are you more fixated on the autopsy and the results we're seeing there? I, I want to know everything. Uh, number one, I want peace in Ferguson, and I think everybody wants that. And, uh, you know, there's not going to be a curfew tonight, so uh, and the National Guard is coming in, so hopefully things will remain calm like they are during the daylight hours, and I just hope that extends all the way through the middle. Let me of the stay night. with you real quick. The National Guard, from what I gather, is going to, number one objective, protect the police command center. Right. How much is that going to help the National Guard's presence, or does it inflame matters? You know, some people say it, it, it is going to inflame matters, but I tell you, w once you get someone who is shooting at law enforcement, it changes the whole game. You know, it, it might be just a small contingent of people there that are raising all, you know, causing all the problems, but once you bring guns into the equation, Mike, that's a game changer. Got it. Janet, your headline right now, the autopsy or calm in Ferguson? Yeah, I mean, I think it's got to be the autopsy and the fact that it was the victim's family that brought the first autopsy. I think that's a real shocker. The other thing is that I think the National Guard, I really think they're being brought in to protect the citizens from the police. And I thought from day one, you know, the police aren't governing themselves very well in this situation. They're coming out. They're already kind of taking the side of the officer. And I think we need a neutral party to step in and say, wait a minute, we're not the Ferguson police and we're in charge, which is what Captain Johnson did so effectively last week. Got it. Let's get a call in. Janita is with us in Michigan. Janita, your thoughts here? My thought is at this time, they have a law that says the protesters, they can protest, but they got to keep it moving. But on the other side of town, they have the cop protesters, and they're not moving. My question is, isn't the law supposed to be for everybody? Mm. Mike Brooks oh, on that front. Actually, the uh, the demonstration for uh, in, in favor of the police officer and, and the cops, I think, was taking place in the city of, uh, of St. Louis, not in Ferguson. Got it. Janet, real but quick comment on that. Well, and I think that they changed that because, again, you know, they're not looking even-handed about this. They're treating the victim like the suspect. And even, you know, Dr. Bodden said in his press conference, he kept saying the defendant, the defendant, because that's the narrative we're used to. That's not the narrative in this case. Michael Brown's not the defendant. Got it. Okay, we've been waiting to hear the officer's side of the story. We may have that. Uh, so stick around. We may have more on what Officer Wilson says happened. That and your phone calls coming up. one 877 Nature Valley Crunchy Granola. Welcome back. We have brand new information, and we may be getting Officer Darren Wilson's account. So a caller calls a radio station, KTFK in St. Louis, identifies herself as Josie and says she knows Wilson's side of the story. And a source, source uh, with detailed knowledge of the investigation tells CNN her account matches Officer Wilson. So here's what we have. Uh, this is, again, according to a caller, but someone close to the investigation says this account is accurate. So he... Uh, tries to get the guys out, and, the, and I'm paraphrasing just the beginning here. He tries to get uh, Michael Brown and his friend out of the road because they're walking uh, in the middle of the road. And then he no hears about the strong arm robbery, notices the cigars, and then, here I'm quoting, he pulled over, and when he tried to get out of the car, twice he was pushed back into the car by Michael. Michael then punched him in the face, and Darren reached for his gun. Michael grabbed the gun, and at one point had the gun pushed against Darren's hip. So Darren pushed the gun away, and the gun went off. Michael and his friend ran, and Darren got out of the car and pursued as protocol. He told them to freeze, and Michael and his friend turned around. Michael started to taunt him and said he wouldn't shoot. Michael then, and again, I'm quoting, bum-rushed him and started coming at him full speed, so Darren started shooting. Again, this is a count from someone by the name of Josie, calls a radio station, and uh, someone close to the investigation says, yes, uh, this is an accurate Account. So let's get everybody's quick take on this. Mike Brooks, first to you real quick. Uh, it, it's interesting, and, you know, it's the first time we're hearing this account. And, you know, if you take how big Michael Brown was, he's 6'4", 292 pounds. Could the officer have been in fear of his life? That's the main question. There it is. Janet Johnson. Well, it seems to be contradicted by what the police said, which is that the officer did not know about the strong arm robbery, and he was just acting on the fact that they were in the middle of the street. So uh, that detail doesn't seem to be corroborated by what we've already learned. Well, from what I get, I think that the initial stop was for they, they were walking right. in the middle of the street. And I think right. this is the new information. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. Do you know that? 
now after the initial uh, confrontation, or if you want to call it that, then he finds out, oh, he sees the cigars. Is, is that what you're gathering too, Mike? Yeah, yeah, and you know, it, there's somewhere in between, his friend had said that apparently he backed up again. Okay. And uh, so, you know, did it click after he told him to get out of the street and it then click? Then wait a minute. These guys match the description of the lookout for the, for the robbery down at the street at the convenience store. So, you know, we don't know exactly uh, what it was going through the officer's head, but initially law enforcement says, that Chief Jackson said, that it was them in the middle of the street that made him stop okay. and brought that to their attention. We want to welcome in Kelvin Washington, radio personality from Los Angeles. Welcome back to the program. All right, Kelvin, so much going on here, uh, but let's get your take on what we just heard, potentially the officer's account. You know, uh, thanks for having me, Mike. That, yep. That's uh, some new breaking news, and that does possibly change some things. Uh, but I think what you're having here is an instance where people are feeling as though this may be the case, but what you're getting is that last straw that broke the camel's back. So we may find out that this story is accurate, that we've just heard. Uh, we may find out there's some truth to this. I do question how the cigars, whether this, this person heard about the cigars. I don't know how the cigars came up. That's kind of strange that they heard that part. But really what's happening here in Ferguson, again, is a situation where people from situations they've had in their own personal lives, years of it, whether it's the L.A. riots with Ry Rodney King, a lot of these hey, things take a quick have break. happened, More coming up. and so finally, okay. Welcome back to HLN Now. Again, a lot going on here. We're going to take your calls. one 877 tell hln is the number. We've got a potential account from Officer Wilson as told to a radio station by a person named Josie who says they know uh, Officer Wilson's account and CNN is confirmed through a source close to the investigation. That account is accurate. Back with us, our XR expert panel. Kevin Washington is with us. Kevin, I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I want you to finish your thought before we move into some of the callers there. It's okay. Uh, I'll just quickly say that, again, uh, the new information that was given to us, uh, this is going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. But you have one side, the other side, and the truth. And we know that the truth is going to be somewhere probably in the middle of what we've heard so far. Uh, but again, I don't think that's going to change what's happening in Ferguson with the mm. pro protesting, the rioting, because people, I guess, again, they're fed up. And this is a situation where you finally have that straw that broke the camel's back and you're just going to see people venting from years of frustration from their own personal accounts and accounts of others so uh expect expect this to prolong uh, uh, you know this is going to carry on a little bit longer just because people want to let their voice be heard yeah could be another tense night tonight hey let's get a call in crystals with us in nebraska hey crystal your thoughts here hi mike hey. yeah um i first wanted to start out and say that um my thought um I'm calling is I'm completely 100% unbiased in this situation. Um, I've had a white cousin out of Omaha, Nebraska, that was murdered by a black man, and her death is still ruled unknown. And um, so, as I'm watching this, I I don't have feelings based off of a person's color of skin. My point in this that I am just flabbergasted at is. You know, everybody is saying we don't know this yet, we don't know that yet, but what we do know is that an officer pursued and shot an unarmed 18-year-old boy, not once, twice, three times, but six times. I, the least, I think, to at least get him in custody would be recklessness with a deadly weapon. I mean, people are taken into custody every day, innocent until proven guilty. And if he is innocent, just as any other person that would discharge six bullets into an, an, another human being that has no form of defending himself, I don't care what what size somebody is. Jesus died on the cross for everybody to have rights, not just white cops, black cops, everybody. This boy deserves answers. This cop is being paid to sit at home and hug and love his family. Okay. Hey, Chris, Michael Brown's family. Yes, sir. You know, no, thank you for the call. All right, Mike Brooks. So that leads, I mean, it sounds like people are going to continue to protest. Right. And to a lot of the protesters, justice will be served when there's an arrest. Exactly. And, uh, you know, it, 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 will there be an arrest? We don't know. We don't know. And, uh, you know, but we have to wait and let this whole investigation play out. There you go. Janet, how long will that take? How long will this? Well, 
All right. The Post-Dispatch, the St. Louis newspaper, had said over the weekend that the attorney, the prosecutor, is going in front of a grand jury this week and that they're not waiting for all the evidence, that they're going to do it, what they call piecemeal. So it's interesting what she said about we don't have all the evidence, but even without all the evidence, we seem to be getting just the negative about Mike Brown. And I think it's the double standard that is upsetting people. As a defense attorney, no one worries about releasing my client's picture. No one worries about his identity being released. I think it's the double standard that's really troubling. There you go. Kelvin, to your point earlier, and it kind of touched on by the caller there, that people won't be satisfied until there's an arrest. Is that your take as well? Yes, and you know, I don't want to act as if I know the exact due process with this regarding an officer who was involved in the shooting, but it just seems as though uh, all of a sudden we see the release of the video of the potential robbery or t t potential theft with Mike Brown. We keep seeing this information that's being released about Mike Brown, but it's we need to know more about the officer. We're not asking for him to be uh, all of a sudden accused, you know, saying that he's guilty. We just want to hear more facts about what happened, maybe hear his side of the story. All you right. know, these are the things that people are wanting. Much more coming up. Stay